say our position on that is that we want Cuba to move toward freedom and openness and if they do we'll respond that's what that's always been our position and uh, and I believe that in the end it will prevail. Mr. Mr. Arafat is uh, talking with some uh, uh, threatening uh, phrases speaking <coughs> of maybe the intifada will be resumed um, and of course the Prime Minister said last night that's no way to negotiate how do you feel about it? Well I agree with that I, I think that uh, you know, if he makes an observation that if this whole thing fails, that it won't be good, then that's understandable, but I don't think it should be encouraged. I, you know, I really look forward to, to uh, this week. I've uh, worked hard to, to get ready for the meeting. I'm anxious uh, to begin my sixth meeting with the Prime Minister and, uh, and then to see Mr. Arafat in a couple of days. And uh, I think we have to have a positive attitude. We need to be reassuring the people. We don't want to, we don't want to undermine any confidence. We need to keep working. Mr. President, President, you said yesterday that uh, you had high hopes, and that seems out of step with some of the views of your, your uh, top officials here. What, what makes you have high hopes for these talks, sir? Well, I've often been out of step uh, in having high hopes with a lot of people. You know, that that's, uh, it may be a defect in my nature, but I, I, but I think, uh, I, for one thing, I, th I think the, that uh, Israel wants peace and a resolution of this, and, uh, and I believe that... Uh, it's very much in the interest of the Palestinians to, and Mr. Arafat to, to seek to resolve it. And we, we're working very hard. I just find that <clears throat> more often than not, uh, you ultimately have success if you stay at something, you keep working at it in good faith. Mr. President, can you please tell us what you believe a credible withdrawal would be? And does Chairman Arafat need to do anything before such a withdrawal should take place? I think that's a conversation I need to have with the Prime Minister first. I don't, We'll do that. Thank you, Mr. 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 Are you in a more difficult situation because of the new makeup of your cabinet, because it's a smaller coalition? Is it more difficult for you to make concessions and to negotiate? This is a difficult day for me because I've lost a good friend, uh, the Deputy Premier and the Ministry of Education. But the <coughs> composition of the government is uh, uh, irrelevant. The people who could topple the government uh, before uh, Mr. Levy departed could topple after uh, uh, he departed. And I say to them what I say to um, everyone here, to President Clinton, we made a decision to go to peace. This is what this government is about, peace with security. And I'm sure that I can muster the necessary support across the government, across the coalition, for something that will move the peace process forward and maintain secure and defensible boundaries for Israel. And you believe you have enough support within your now more limited government to, to pass any sort of vote for withdrawal, for further Israeli withdrawal? For a withdrawal that will ensure our defenses. That is what we're prepared to do. We're prepared to move forward, but not to jeopardize the security of the state of Israel. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, last over to Cuba, sir. Is Cuba a threat to the national security of the United States? Scott, we're done, Scott. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
This was a good training for the next one. What? It was a good training for the next one. <laughs> I think we cross pollinated. <laughs> Welcome. Let me just briefly say that uh, I am delighted to see the Prime Minister again. This is our sixth meeting. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to work hard to make progress. And uh, I want to reaffirm to the people of Israel the, the strong support of the United States for Israel and the strong support of the United States for the security of Israel and a peace process that proceeds within that commitment. And I think we can succeed. Mr. President, Mr. President, what are your expectations from the meeting with the Prime Minister? That we're going to have a good faith, uh, detailed, frank discussion and do our best to make some progress. And uh, I think we've got a chance to do that. Mr. Are, you going, to, are you going to pressure the, uh, Mr. Netanyahu to uh, give concessions to the Palestinians? I'm going to have a discussion with him about uh, where we think the peace process is. I wouldn't use that word. Mr. President, would would Israel has to make its own decisions about its own security. You wouldn't use the word pressure, Mr. President. Go ahead, sir. Who do you think is breaching mm -hmm. the agreement more severely, more seriously, the Israelis or the Palestinians? Well, I don't think it's fruitful to discuss that. I think what, what we ought to talk about is what both sides can, can do now get the peace process moving again. That's the most important thing. No. מדוע לא כל הפרסומים, כל ההדלפות האמריקאיות מדברות על לחץ של המסיקים תונלך? קודם כל, אני חושב שהיחסים בינינו הם אחרים, ותמיד אלה שמנדים את הלחץ וההתקפלות בפני הלחץ, תמיד מתאכזבים והם התאכזבו גם הפעם. ומעבר לזה, אני רוצה להגיד לך, כשדנים בדברים שקשורים ביסודות הקיום שלנו, לחצים לא ישנו דבר, וגם אני לא חושב שזה מה שיהיה פה. יש פה ניסיון שלנו. ושל הנשיא קלינטון וממשלת ארצות הברית, לזוז קדימה, אנחנו מוכנים לעשות זאת בלי לסכן את ביטחונה של ישראל. אדוני ראש הממשלה, אתה הולך להציג בפגישה הזאת אחוזים, דברים ספציפיים, כפי שהאמריקאים מצפים? אני ודאי אציג אפשרויות, אני לא מתכוון לנקוב באחוזים מדויקים. כלומר, בפגישה עם הנשיא לא תציג אחוזים? אני לא מתכוון להציג, יכול להיות שיציגו בפניי, אני אגיב להציג למה שיוצג. States as uh, our partner in the peace process. As I did with the Prime Minister Netanyahu, I want to emphasize what a critical time this is in the process and the importance of both parties meeting their obligations. I also would like to take just the second to underline the principles of the peace process. Mutual obligations and the concept of land for peace so that Israelis can live in security, recognized by all their neighbors and the Palestinians can realize their aspirations to live as a free people. Uh, if we can focus on these principles, I'm convinced we can make some progress. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Chairman Arafat a little report on my meeting with Mr. Netanyahu, and then we're going to go to work. Mr. President, Mr. President. When, do you think you can, uh, when do you think the Israelis will finally meet their UN obligations or treaty obligations to give back conquered land? Well, we're going to discuss that. We're, we're working on it. We know we, we believe uh, you know, the Oslo process sets out a, uh, a schedule for uh, redeployment, and uh, that's obviously one of the major issues to be discussed. But Senator they're not Reese. going to beat it, are they? Well, let, give us a chance. We're working on it. 
المتفائلين لهذا الجهد الذي يبذله الرئيس كلينتون لحماية ودفع عمل السلام وأنا واثق أنه جهوده تقلل بالنجاح Well, we're going to have a, after this meeting, then uh, what we'll do is to uh, see whether we have moved the parties close together. And if we have, then we'll try to figure out how to close uh, the loop uh, and get an understanding on what the next steps are. And if we can do that, we want to do it obviously fairly quickly. We don't want to just keep dragging this out. I think we, we have a sense of urgency here. تنفيذ ما تم الاتفاق عليه والتوقع عليه في الفترة الأبيض الأمريكي. طالما هنالك ضغط وجهد من الرئيس كلينتون فأنا واثق بكل الثقة أن حملة النجاح ستحمى وسنستمر إلى الأمام فيها. As long as there is pressure and efforts by President Clinton, I'm fully confident that the peace process will be protected and will be succeeded. نحن لا ننسى إطلاقا أنه فخامة الرئيس قد أرسل السيد أبو برايت والسيد نيس فور سعيد المطلات للمنطقة بدفع هذه العملية. And we should not forget that the President also have sent Madam Albright, Secretary of State, and Mr. Ross to the region many times. to push the peace process forward. So you believe Mr. Netanyahu will stand by his commitments? Uh, we hope so. He would do so. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Forgive, Thank you. forgive us for raising this while you're dealing with important issues in the Middle East. But could you clarify for us, sir, exactly what your relationship was with Ms. Walensky and whether the two of you talked by phone, including any messages you may have left? Let me say, first of all, I want to reiterate what I said yesterday. The allegations are false, and I would never ask anybody uh, to do anything other than tell the truth. Let's get to the big issues there uh, about the nature of the relationship and whether I suggested anybody not tell the truth. Those, that is false. Now, there are a lot of other questions that are, I think, very legitimate. You have a right to ask them. You, that you and the American people have a right to, to get answers. We are working very hard to comply, get all the requests for information up here, uh, and we will give you as many answers as we can, as soon as we can, at the appropriate time, consistent with our obligation to also cooperate with the investigations. And that's not a dodge. That's really what I've, what I've, I've talked with our people. I want to do that. Uh, I'd like for you to have more rather than less, sooner rather than later. So we'll work through it as quickly as we can and get all those questions out there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you celebrate Christmas last Christmas, acknowledge it in an explicit and open way. And I hope that this uh, trip will lead to some reassessment on the part of the Cuban government that will enable us to move closer together in many ways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. we got to go to work. Let's hit it.